Currently, my ship doesn't have enough fuel to jump out of the system. Fortunately, I called a friend of mine who has been working on a ship with the longest jump range ever attempted. I think it's something in the range of, I don't know, 337 light years? He's coming with fuel limpets to get me out of here, but first, let me tell you about this build because it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. My friend's name might surprise you, because it's Commander Minikill. Yes, that Minikill. He also made the world's or galaxy's fastest ship with a boost of 932 meters per second. But of course, you already knew that. I'm going to let him in on the comms to detail each module from top to bottom. So if for whatever reason we don't make it out, you can know what we did here, Mars. And you can know this is all your fault. Um... Hello there, Commander Minikill here. Yes, I've completed an anaconda with a jump range of 84.32 light years, and I'm about to boost that up to 337.32 light years with this neutron star. I'm not sure about the integrity of this build since I've had to shave off most of its life support and critical systems to get it up this high. So, like Spark said, we're sending you what the build was in case maybe not everything goes as planned today. So, to start off, no weapons! No weapons! That's right, this seems pretty obvious, but we want to be as thorough as possible for you. So, moving on. Utilities! No utilities! No utilities! Again, you don't want any extra weight, so that means no heat sinks, no nothing. I know it seems crazy with all those stars to run into, but this is an emergency flight and this ship was built for a single purpose to go as far and as fast as freakingly possible! It's a freak ship! Now to the core internals. Lightweight alloys have no mass to them, so any upgrade to them is basically magic fairy dust that increases your hull integrity without increasing your weight. I put in heavy duty grade 5 with experimental deep plating. Since you won't be flying with any shields, this will be the only sensible upgrade you have on board the ship to actually keep it relatively intact. You'll see what I mean when we go further down the list. Just trust me, you'll want to invest in this. Okay, try not to laugh here, but the power plant on this thing is going to be a 2D power plant with overcharged grade 3 and experimental stripped-down effect. I wouldn't trust this thing to run a toaster, let alone run my ship, but then again, we haven't even gotten to what I've done to the life support systems. You don't want to know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Just not yet. Now for the thrusters. This is the most complicated part of the build, so pay attention. You will need to get another ship that can hold some class 4D thrusters like a Diamondback Explorer. You'll need to take these to Felicity Farseer and modify it with a grade 1 clean drive modification and drive distributors experimental effect. Then store that module in your module storage and then you leave them there. Don't worry, we aren't done with the thrusters yet. We'll get back to them. Okay, next module. Okay, now for one of the crown jewels of this build, the frameshift drive itself. It's a 6A grade 5 increased range frameshift drive with a mass manager experimental effect. With this module alone on a sensible anaconda, this would get you around the 60 light year range. Most Explorer Condas settle for at least 70 light years, but this isn't like most Explorer Condas. This is the Jump Aconda. We're talking about 84.32 light years total. Jump Conda, yeah. The life support is a Class 5D with a lightweight upgrade Grade 5. It started out weighing 8 tons, and now it's only 1.2 tons. I'm not exactly sure how much of the ventilation is gone or how much of the windows they shaved off, but let's just say I wouldn't sneeze in here. I actually had to travel all the way to Colonia for this upgrade because Grade 5 isn't available in the bubble. So I'm assuming that the liability laws are a lot more lenient out there. The power distributor we're using is a Class 1D with a Grade 1 engine focused upgrade and the stripped down experimental effect. The sensors on this baby are Class 8D with lightweight Grade 5. I wish I could throw out more of these sensors, but they would literally make giant holes in the ship if I removed them. Also, fuel tanks are overrated. Downgrade that 32 ton fuel tank to an 8 ton fuel tank. It's just that there's so much scoopable gas out there that having anything over 8 tons is just plain crazy. I mean, why would you need more than 8 tons? <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. 
<laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Speaking of scoopable gas, we're now in the optional internal module section, and this baby is packing a 7A fuel scoop. I know it's a bit excessive having a miniature black hole in your ship to fill up just eight tons of fuel, but trust me, seeing your anaconda engorge itself almost instantly really does something for me. Yeah, sounds hot. There's no mass to these things, so why not? This shooting star on no wheels still can't jump far enough. So we are going to go raid some alien ruins for some Guardian tech. The Class 5H Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster gives an additional 10 and a half light year jump range. As with most of these upgrades, this module is not going to come easy. You have to visit a dead civilization, read its web history, deliver Jolly Ranchers to this thing, and then deal with its antivirus hardware. You know, they say it isn't the destination, it's the journey. Yeah, but this is literally the journey for the journey, so... Well, then I don't know what that says about anything. Okay, lastly in this module freak show is the class 4D thrusters with a grade 1 clean drive modification and a stripped down experimental effect. One problem, though. With that modification, none of these modules will even fit on the ship. That's a problem. Which is why we had you modify and store those thrusters from earlier. Ha ha! After you've installed and modified all the other modules, you can then come back to Felicity, swap your thrusters with the previously modified 4D thrusters, then you change the experimental effect from drive distributors to a stripped down experimental effect to reduce the mass of the ship to its minimum value. If you're so smart to try to put on 4D thrusters with a stripped down modification, you can't! We basically just hacked physics. I told you this was complicated. Okay. Question? Yes! Minnie, can you use the jump ponium boost in the synthesis panel with the neutron star boost? Actually, I can't. The synthesis and the neutron star boost don't stack. The neutron star will overwrite whatever synthesis I make and vice versa. And since the japonium multiplier is a three times multiplier, while well, the neutron star multiplier is a four times multiplier, it's the neutron star boost is the obvious choice. Okay, I feel dumb now. Ah, no, it was, it was news to me too. And that's it. I spent over two years putting this ship together, and I am super proud. I was just signing my waiver for the life support upgrade here in Colonia when I got your distress call. I am really excited to finally give it a full neutron star boost. Okay, my course is locked in. Now, to fly into this jet stream. Wait, is, is this the right way to the end of the stream? Okay, check in the jump range. Holy crap! <laughs> 337.3 two light years. I knew it'd work, but it's another thing to actually see it. My numbers never fail me. Hells yeah! All right, Mini! I'm sending our message about the ship to Mars now. And it's saved for posterity. Roger that! Frame shift drive overcharged to ludicrous speed! All right, come rescue me, pal. I'm so excited. Friendship drive charging! Godspeed, Commander. See you on the other side! Lord Jesus, don't fail me now. You made it! Haha! <laughs> uh, now I can flush my toilet. Oh no. Don't worry, it's not backed up or anything. Oh. Oh no. What oh no's? You mean... Oh yes! Happy sounds! No, 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 no. How could I be this stupid? I feel like... I feel like I don't want to answer that. I spent so much time and effort in making this the ultimate jump conda That you didn't think of a better, cooler name for it? No! I didn't think to bat freaking fuel limpets! Oh. And now I don't have enough fuel to jump back out! Oh. And now my life support just turned off. Oh, well, at least you have a cool name for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Jump Baconda. Yeah, it's a great name for a ship that can only make one jump. Ah, uh, man, did I really just come out all this way without fuel to get back? Again, I feel like I won't like the answer to this. Damn it, Minnie! 
What's that saying you have, Sparks? Make up a god and pray to it. 